it's been a long and busy transfer window, but surely, surely now we've got the squad to get ourselves promoted at the fifth time of asking. Let's find out as we kick off Season 5 with a game versus newly promoted Scarborough Athletic in today's episode of Walks to the Prem. Hello guys, it's me, Bad Jokes, back at you once again with another video and today guys we've got episode number 30 of the Kingsland Walks to Prem save here on Football Manager 2020 and yep, like I said in the intro, we are kicking off season 5 today and we are still in the Conference North, how we're still in this league I don't know. We've been in the playoffs the last two years and failed to get out of them. But finally, I think this should be the year. I think we've got the best squad we've ever had at this football club. We've certainly got the biggest, I think. So let's go and have a look at the transfers before we do crack on with the game versus Scarborough Athletic today. And first things first, we'll go have a look at see who has left the football club. And as you can see, Kieran Jones has been taken by our local rivals, Boston United. I think they activated his release clause of 39,000, I think it was he actually went for. So that was a little bit disappointing. He has gone. And what are my scouts rating him at now? Yeah, a 90. So definitely too good for our level so you can see why boston took him and then the only other person to leave the football club is tyreek wilson for twenty nine thousand pound so that gives us a total of sixty nine thousand pound that we've brought in he was of course our main left back last season he played 44 games for us got five assists and a 6.83 rating so very disappointing to lose him but they offered us money. We are in quite a bad financial situation again. I'll show you that in a minute after we've gone through all the transfers. And so, transfers, you can see, we've done a lot, a lot, a lot of business. So, we're going to do this just by who's coming on freeze and then loans. Because you can see, we've brought in quite a lot on freeze, quite a lot on loans. So, first one up is a fella by the name of Dexter Walters. He is a 24-year-old attacking midfielder on the right-hand side, but can play on the left or can play up front if needed as well. And he's two-and-a-half star current, three-star potential ability. He has come in and joined us on a non-contract deal. So, if he doesn't play, he doesn't get paid. So, I don't mind that too much. And as well, after that, we've got Macaulay Robinson, 18-year-old young centre-back, two-and-a-half star current, three-and-a-half star potential ability. He looks like he could be okay. He's not going to be first choice, but if we get any sort of injury crisis, he should be fairly comfortable stepping in. And we are paying him, again, non-contract deal. So, again, doesn't pay, doesn't get paid. So, yep, good, good, good. And after that is a fella I'm quite excited about. We bought him in on my, what would be my 33rd birthday. So, Andrew, um, oh, how do you pronounce this? Um, um, uh, Andrew, and Andrew. Um, 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 Bedelli. Yeah, Andrew we're going with. And so, yeah, he looks quite good. Three and a half star current, three and a half star potential ability, 13 heading, 12 marking, 12 tackling. He looks very good. We are paying him 250 quid a week, which I think for someone of his quality is a little bit of a bargain there. So I'm very happy with that. I think he was previously at Norwich, which is how we've got him. Yep. Yep, once again, using the link with being so close to Norwich. And then after him, we've got a fella in who I didn't realise. But once, one, he's Brazilian. I realised that. That's the main reason why I got him. Imagine having a Brazilian down at the walks. That is just brilliant. Bernardo Rosa. 
He is an attacking midfielder. He can play in central midfield as well. Got decent first touch, decent passing, decent decisions. I am trying to get him trained as a left winger because we are dangerously short on left wingers. And I think with his acceleration and his pace, if we can get his crossing working, he could be a little bit of a gem over on the left-hand side. And so, yeah, we've brought him in. But what I didn't realise is that, yeah, he, he plays for my team in real life. He's in West Ham's Youth Academy, IRL. And so, yeah, so hopefully he should be all right. How much are we paying him, actually? We are paying him 525 quid a week. That's quite a lot. I didn't quite realise he was paying him that much when I did the deal. And he's not exactly first choice, is he? Whoops. Oh, well. Get him working on the left-hand side. And he should be all right. And then following him in is a guy by the name of Dong Dehi. Burnley fans might know him. I think he's in Burnley's Youth Academy. He is two and a half star current. Four and a half star potential ability. And he does look quite good to be fair. If Adam Marriott slips up or has a bad run of games. We've got a couple strikers who can come in and do a job. Dong Dehi is definitely one of them. And we are paying him £600 a week. You can start kind of seeing why we're in financial difficulties with all the wages I've been handing out. And then, after that, we've got a central midfielder in again from Norwich, Callum McCarthy. You can see his face there. Brilliant work, once again, from uh, Chilled Moose. We see that some brilliant faces. If you need any for your regions, go and... Go and subscribe to her Patreon, because she does do some very, very nice faces. And yet, he's a central midfielder from Norwich. 15 first touch, 11 passing, 13 technique, 20 aggression though. So that's a little bit of a concern. Hopefully, we can train that down. And he's got 3.5 star current, 4 star potential ability. And he is going straight into the first team for the game today. And he does look like he could be a little gem. He is on £700 a week. The wages are just going up and up and up. And then after that, we've got Anthony Herbin. We've got him in on a permanent deal now after he impressed for us on loan last season. So I'm very happy to have him in. And we are paying him £700 a week as well. So yeah, not the best, but... He's a good keeper, and we do need keepers, so I'm fairly happy with that deal. And as well, coming in from Peterborough is a guy by the name of Ewan Murray. Ewan Murray. He's a 23-year-old attacking midfielder, can play in central midfield as well. Two and a half star current, four star potential ability, 375 quid a week. Uh, now we're on to all the loan players we have brought in. And first up from Southend is Sam Habergum. Habergum, he's a left back, two and a half star current, two and a half star potential ability. And yeah, we're short on left backs. So he was one of the best ones I could find that we could get in on loan. So I thought I'd bring him in, see how he does. And yeah, not really too much to say about him. We are paying... £150 a week for him and £230 playing monthly fee. So, yeah, decent deal. We were short there, so we were a little bit desperate. And then we've got a couple in from Ipswich. Dylan Crow, 22-year-old, right back, 3.5 star current, 4.5 star potential ability. He looks like he could be very good. We are paying 700 quid a week for the privilege of having him in my football club. And I think he could be very good. I think he might be our first choice. Right back? Yeah, he is. So, yep, yeah, he's going to go in and hopefully do a decent job. And then alongside him, we've got another left back. Another one who doesn't look that brilliant, if I'm being honest. But, again, we were desperate. Two and a half star current, four star potential ability. There just wasn't any left backs available this summer. So we've had to get what we could get. And we are paying you 140 quid a week for the privilege. So cheap, cheap, cheapest chips. David Dickinson would be happy with that deal, I think. 
And then after that, we've got Rob Crampton, a central defender, 19 years old, 2.5 star current, 4 star potential ability, 11 marking, 11 tackling, 13 decisions, uh, 13 stamina. And so he looks quite decent. And we are paying absolutely nothing for him. So I'm very, very happy with that particular deal, especially considering he is probably going to be one of our first choice uh, central defenders. I think give it a few games, see how he maybe does and then move on from there. And so, yeah, I'm very happy with that deal. And then after that, we've got Che Moxie from Peter Bar. He's again another young centre-back, 19 years old, two-star current, four-star potential ability, 12 for heading, 13 for tackling. And again, I don't think we're paying anything for you. No, we're not. So, yep, yeah, very happy with that deal. And then this one, Stephen Hopkins. You might remember from the last video, I was saying I did not want this guy anywhere near my football club because he single-handedly lost us that playoff semi-final. But I was looking around for centre-backs and there was nobody decent again that my scouts were bringing to me. So I thought, he came up again. I thought, you know what, sod it. We're going to go for it. We're going to bring him back in. He's still only young. So hopefully he can learn from those mistakes and he can be a better player this season. And so we've brought him back in and we are paying 450 quid a week to have him back. And so hopefully he can improve. And then after that, we've got another one who we had on loan last season. Jaden Allenby-John. He only played seven games for us last year. And I don't think any of those were starts. In fact, only two of those were starts in the league. And so, yeah. So, yeah, we've brought him back in. He's, again, another backup to Adam Marriott. He should be okay if Marriott does go down. And so, yeah, that's pretty much a story with that deal. And then we have got Ian Wright's grandkid. I cannot believe that just 20 years after watching Ian Wright play football, I am already managing one of his grandkids. It is absolutely mental, his family, that we've got him in. DiMaggio Wright Phillips, he's a right-sided midfielder. If he can be anything like Sean Wright Phillips was back in the day, I will be very, very, very happy. And so we are paying 900 quid a week for him. Did not realise he was paying that much. We are definitely overpaying. But he's our first choice right winger. So hopefully he can do a decent job there. And then finally, last but not least, Gary Gill is a young attacking midfielder. 19 years old. Two star current. Three and a half star potential ability. Again, he's coming from Peterborough. So we are paying absolutely nothing. And he is literally just back up just in case of a terrible injury crisis. And so, uh, let's have a look at the finances and then we'll crack on with the game today. And as you can see, we've got an overall balance of £516,000. That is despite doing all the money grabbing, uh, all the money grabbing leagues that we did over the last couple of seasons. You can see them all there. And it didn't work. The finances would go up, but then they would come straight back down. I'm not sure why. Because if you have a look at the income, you can see there, last month we brought in 2.4 million. But we spent 2.2 million. And last month, yeah, highest expenditure is other. Not sure what that is. Not sure why we're spending quite so much on that. So, yeah, that's a little bit frustrating. And so that does mean that our projection for the rest of, for the end of the season, sorry, is £171,000 in debt. So we really, really need to go up. And as well as that, before we do get started with the game, actually, Club Vision. We have got to work within the wage budget. We are currently doing that. And we've got to reach the playoffs. Should be able to do that fairly easily. First round of the FA Cup they won once again. You never know with a cup. You could get a dodgy draw. 
and then you can be in trouble. So hopefully, although it is a four level requirement, hopefully if we don't reach it, they won't be too upset. And they want us to reach the third round of the FA Trophy. And my contract is currently expiring at the end of the season. But hopefully go on a decent run and the board will just give me another deal, I should think. And so with that all said, let's go and have a look at the team for today's game. We have got Herbin in goal, keeping his place from last season. And at left back, we've got Tommy Smith. At right back, we've got Dylan Crow. And in the middle, we have got Omar Babadeli. Oh, I have murdered that name. And then we've got Stephen Hopkins as well alongside him. And then in the midfield, David Mbala is still at the football club. But he is now on a non-contract deal. So if he doesn't play, he doesn't get paid. And he's taken a massive pay cut. So he keeps his place on the left-hand side for the first few games. But if he doesn't impress, then we're going to think about possibly moving him on. And then in the middle, we have got McCarthy making his debut for the club alongside Xavier Simmons. On the right-hand side, we've got Wright Phillips again making his debut for the club. And up top, it is that regular twosome, Romain Mundell, just behind the legend that is Adam Marriott. Come on, you Linets. As you would expect, the bookmakers have us as the heavy favourites against a team that has just come up from the league below. So hopefully we can prove the bookies right and get a nice comfortable big win to set us off right for the start of the season. So we're in the dressing room for this first game of the season and as usual, my assistant has not given any opposition instructions. Let's go assertive. We're favourites for a reason. Only one person reacted. A few more now. And go for the old Georgie Michael. And that's most of them motivated. I'm happy with that. And prediction time. You know what? 3-0. I'm feeling really confident. 3-0 to us is what I'm saying. Come on, you linnets. First highlight of the game. And it's Scarborough with a throw in. They throw it to their own man, but Mundell tries to win it back, but gives it away to Dickens. And now, can we win it back off him? Please, sir. Please, sir. May I have the ball back? And Derby crosses it. Goes to Hilson, and it's 1-0 Scarborough. Oh, my gosh. What a start. That is, that is horrendous. What a ball here from Derby to find Hilson. He was helped by our defence. Not really being switched on. Darby with a great ball there. And our man there, what's his name? Smith. Tommy Smith on his debut has just let Hilson in there. As has our other main man, Andrew. And so, yeah, awful, awful defending there to start the season. And we are 1-0 down. Well, that's my prediction out the window already. 15 minutes in now, and we've got a throw in. McCarthy to Smith, over the top, and then Barla is out wide. Can he get the ball into the box? Oh, is he going to? Yes, he does. Goes to Mundell, who squares it, but Dickens clears it. And now Scarborough on the counter again. Tansy with the ball, goes for the long shot, and thankfully that never looked dangerous at all. Oh, well, those were the only highlights of the first half. And judging by the match stats, we should really be ahead. They have had four shots, two are 13, two on target, two are five. We've had four off target to their two. And we've had 53% of their possession. Not quite sure what's going wrong here. I'm going to try and leave it for the first 10 minutes of the second half see if we can get back into it and if not i might switch to a two up top we haven't played that one for a long long time i think so it might be interesting to see how that can do for us in the second half of this game and so we've got a bit of reaction out of most of the lads there and mario is happy and so let's leave the game at that and hopefully we can turn this around as actually, in fact, you know what? I'm going to go attacking. 
I'm going to go attacking. Where are we? There we are. All right then, second half. Come on, turn this game around, boys. 37 seconds into the second half and Scarborough have the ball and they've played it forward. We've headed it away. Goes to Simmons, to Hopkins, to Simmons. McCarthy over the top, but Marriott is unable to get onto that ball. And now Dickens has it again for Scarborough. Again he goes long. Hopkins again heads away. And DiMaggio Wright Phillips with it. Plays it, just gives it away to Carter. That is the problem with having half the team be new to the squad. It does take a while to get the chemistry working. And now Scarborough get the ball out wide. Goes to Tanzi. And Tanzi plays it inside. Derby to Carter. Come on, win this ball back. Please, come on. McCarthy does. And Marriott has it. Tries to play it through and that was awful. What is going on with us today? And still the highlight goes on. Clark goes long. We again head it forward. Mundell to Marriott to Mundell. Mundell plays it. Goes for the shot. And what a goal that is. What a way to open your account for the season. Romain Mundell with an absolute thunderbolt of a goal. That was worth waiting all that time for the highlight to end. I thought Mundell was going to play it through to Marriott, but no. He just goes a bang. He goes boss. And the ball hits the back of the net. Oh, come on. That was exactly the start we needed to this second half. Ten minutes in now. Allen throws the ball forward to Carter. To Macbeth. And can we win this ball back? Yes, we do. Mundell plays it, but goes to nobody. And they just flick it on. And again, second half now. We're starting to play a little bit better. We're starting to look a little bit better. Mundell, he's in again. He's gone for it again. But Thunder does only strike once. Half an hour left to go in the game. Carter plays the ball back to Tanzi off the throw-in. He crosses it in and we head it out of the box, but only as far as McCauley. And now can we win it back? Dickens, come on, please give us the ball back. White Phillips does win it back, but just goes long. And Marriott is unable to get onto it, but he wins it at the second attempt. Marriott, the goal-scoring machine, has put it wide. Oh... 30 seconds after that, the highlights are still coming thick and fast. Marriott with the ball goes to Mundell. And can he play it out wide? No, he just gives it away to Derby. That's very, very poor. And now they play it forward, but Crow clears it. And it's all back and forth. Nobody really keeping the ball all that well. Smith. He goes long again, and can Marriott get onto this? He is. He's in, surely this time. And indeed it is. Adam Marriott is back for the season. That is taking him an hour to get started. How many goals is he going to get this year? Get your predictions in down below, actually. How many do you think Marriott's going to get? I think he's got 45 and 44 over the last couple of seasons. We'll check that after this game. So let me know how many you think he's going to get. Okay, just the one change being made with just over 20 minutes left to go. Bernardo Rocha, the young Brazilian, is coming on in place of Callum McCarthy. See what he can do for this last 20 minutes. See if he can set up a goal to really put this game to bed. Herbin now with a goal kick. He goes long. And to absolutely nobody. Dickens has it, but he's fumbled it. Marriott is in, and you do not give that chance to Adam Marriott. That is two for the day. Three for Kings Lynn. We are looking good now we've got going. That was a very nice poacher's goal from the man Marriott. What their defender was doing there, what the Dickens he was doing, I haven't got a clue. And Marriott just powered the ball past the keeper. Just one more change being made now. Diaz Wright coming on in place of Xavier Simmons just to see this game out. We should have it all wrapped up now, but just better to be safe. Oh, six and a half minutes left. Scarborough have got a corner. And our man, our keeper, comes and collects it nicely. And now, can he set up a counter-attack? Can we maybe get a fourth goal? He's taking his time about it, is what he's doing. 
and he's thrown it to the man with the unpronounceable name. He plays it wide and White Phillips is never going to get onto that. But Dickens, he's had a poor game. He might give it away. He doesn't. Alexander plays it long. Tansy is in behind our defence here. Oh, don't make me nervous. Don't make me nervous. The unpronounceable man has cleared it. And it goes to Dickens. And again, back to Alexander. And Crow this time, plays it long. But Alexander heads it away. Mundell to White Phillips. And White Phillips, can he find a man? He goes back to Mundell. Plays it through to Marriott. Through his hat-trick. Can he do it? No, he can't. Bit too tight an angle. And Clark parries the ball out for a corner kick. And it's going to be the man Mbala taking it. He crosses it in. And their keeper collects it in midair. A minute left. Clark with the ball. Plays it long. Tansy to Stacey. To McCoy. And oh, it's hit the post. And Smith is cleared. And oh, we are not seeing this game out with any sort of conviction. Oh, Mbala just kicked the ball. Why has Mbala not just hoofed it? Thankfully, right Phillips has. He's learned off his old man's, off his old man's man even. Still can't believe Ian White's got a grandkid playing football. That is just craziness. And now the highlight is still going. Marriott with the ball. Can he turn? He does. Mundell, can he find a teammate? Or does he need to? No, he doesn't. Romain Mundell makes it four. That's two each for Marriott and Romain Mundell. And we have looked very good in this second half. It took us 45 minutes to wake up. But once we have woke up, we have looked oh so good. Slid that ball into the net. It took a little bit of luck hitting the post. But it was always going in, I think. And now, oh, could we get a fifth? Could we get a fifth? Rosa to Mundell to Rosa. Back to the man with an un unpronounceable name. He plays it long and, well, well, rather ironically, it's gone to a fellow called Long. And now what's he going to do with it? He plays it as his name suggests. And now Rosa to right. Ride, uh, wide even, I want him to go. Hopkins. And is right Phillips going to get onto this? He is. And can he beat his man? Nope. Oh, is he just time-wasting? No. Good. I don't want him to be time-wasting. Crow with the ball. Plays it in, but Macbeth heads it away. McCoy coming forward. Can we win this back? Tansy. Tansy is in the box. And that's quite an awful shot. And that is the full-time whistle. Four goals to one. We have dominated this game. 27 shots to their 15. 15 on target to their four. Five clear-cut chances. Possession was right down the middle. But that is how you start a new season. Um, if I wasn't feeling confident before, I definitely am now. I'm going to go, I'm very happy with the result. And most everybody is delighted. So now let's get back on the coach. Let's get home. And let's see where we're going to come back for the next episode. Alright then guys, when shall we come back? I want to try and get a few games done. So I might get all of August done. I might start doing just one game a month on video. I think that's going to be a good idea. So we can try and get through this season. Although September is quite a long month. Might try and do one or two in September. Uh, let's see, what shall we do? Darlington? I've probably already played Darlington in this series. But I think that seems a good time to come back. Because that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Yes, 9 games away. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to come back for the game against Darlington. And so guys, if you've enjoyed that video, pop a massive thumbs up down below. Subscribe to the channel for not only this series, but also my Builder Nation series with Mumbai City FC and the Indian national team. The next video in that is going to be out tomorrow. So, yeah, check that one out. That should be good. Uh, follow me on Twitter, at Bad Jokes Gaming. 
and as well as that check out the passion for fm website discord uh the twitter the facebook all of that good stuff all the information as ever down below and check out all the other passion for fm content creators check all them guys out and so yep that is going to be everything from me for today arrivederci